inside. It can't be stopped. package you ordered. It came in. Oh, cool. All right. Also, there's popsicles in the break room. Cherry? Last one. Hello UT and hello the world. I'm your host, Andrew Rosas. And unlike the former host of the show, I love robots. I want robots everywhere. <laughs> you might even say, I am a robot. <laughs> Scratch that last one. R robots help us in all manner of ways. And when is giving an artificial intelligence physical form ever backfired? Please put down your weapon. You have 20 seconds to comply. Well, certainly we have some examples of some kind, gentle robots, right? Reassemble, Stephanie. Reassemble. Well, I like music of almost any kind, including this. See, there are plenty of nice robots out there. But what happens when robots evolve? And how is that related to biological evolution? Well, a team of computer scientists here at UT found that in virtual models, robots actually evolved faster and with more efficiency after simulated mass extinctions like the one that gunned down the dinosaurs in their prime. So let's ask some scientists. Can you describe evolved robots after a simulated mass extinction? Okay, let's talk to a different scientist, such as Dr. Risto Mikulainen, professor of computer science here at UT, who just co-published a study on robotic evolution after mass extinctions. Doctor, uh, the first and most important question, the one I'm sure on everyone's mind is, uh, am I pronouncing your name correctly? I'm Risto Mikulainen. Nailed it. Now, let me ask you a question. How do robots evolve? And how is that similar to biological evolution? What we do is computational evolution. So we take motivation from biology. Uh, there's a whole um, set of algorithms that are um, machine learning algorithms that they try to imitate what happens in biology, like neural networks, uh, reinforcement learning, and evolutionary computation. Very cool. So how do these biological systems influence your work? We work with biologists and we talk to them and find, about, find out about these interesting uh, principles that they've discovered. And then we think about, can they be used to um, build better artificial systems, like robots? Now let's talk about mass extinctions and how those shake things up in evolution. There was a hypothesis that mass extinctions, even though they are very harmful, under some conditions they might actually help evolution move along. And uh, we had developed this algorithm called uh, Novelty Search. Um, Joel Lehman uh, did that in his dissertation, and, and he was here as a postdoc. Uh, and uh, the idea there is that evolution does not have a goal, like it does not have a goal in biology, uh, but continuously it's seeking new opportunities. I mean, in a sense that when um, an organism stumbles upon, or species stumbles upon a new opportunity, it might be beneficial and they might survive and they might thrive. Uh, and novelty search models that. In the real world, mysterious natural forces have caused our extinction level events. Meteors, volcanic activity, the third act of superhero movies, these are all possible suspects. But what does an extinction level event look like for a robot? Doctor, how do you create this kind of devastation inside a computer without downloading a Windows update or opening an email from totally real person at spellingmistake.foreigncountry.scam? It doesn't really matter that much. What matters is that you uh, terminate about 90% of your population, um, and they can be randomly selected. Yikes. So how is this simulated, and how does evolution thrive on these principles? So the evolution does not directly try to solve a goal like build a robot that walks as fast as possible. Evolution, uh, computational evolution tries to discover new ways of walking. For instance, a robot early on might fall flat on its face, um, it's not really good walking, but it's different from you know, trying to take a step. But then when it falls flat, it develops some behavior where it takes a step and jumps and falls flat on its face a lot further out. Now, that's starting to be something like a step towards very fast walk because 
running and fast walking is like controlled falling. Uh, you just keep putting a leg in front of the other and that way you can stay upright and, and, and run faster. And that's exactly what Novelty Search discovered. Uh, one more question. Will our future robot overlords take over the world, cracking their laser whips at us as we toil in their vast beryllium mines? Yes. I knew it! Wait, explain. That, yes, I mean, the sense that yes, that's a good question. Um, so, are robots going to take over the world? Um, well, robots will be everywhere uh, soon. They're going to be automated drivers, so we can do some work while we are getting to work, uh, uh, or watch TV, whatever it is that we want to do. And maybe if in the very distant future, maybe uh, this kind of hybrid um, intelligent agent is the future of, of humankind, so we will become robots in the next stage of evolution. Um, so if robots will take over the world, that means that we become robots. Well, there you have it. Nothing to worry about here. Hopefully in the future, scientists like Dr. Miku Lanin and others will be able to keep our well-oiled machines humming along like well-oiled similes. If you'd like to learn more about this subject, former students and colleagues of Dr. Miku Lanin, Joe Lehman and Kenneth Stanley have actually published a book about evolutionary variation called The Myth of Objective. Why Greatness Cannot Be Planned, which is actually selling slightly better than my book, Picking Up a Pizza on the Way Home from Work, Why Greatness Can Be Planned. Hey, if you like this video, why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel? Also, please feel free to like us on the various social media outlets of choice. As always, I'm Andrew Rosas, reminding you to stay hooked.